This is the last episode uh, dealing with uh, Chapter 6 of Computational Optical Imaging. Chapters 5 and 6 deal with imaging with coherent wave fields. Uh, this particular slide is uh, from uh, episode 28, where we uh, started our discussion of wave field imaging with holography. And this slide was to emphasize that uh, we don't have full control over fields at optical frequencies, and we're not able to directly detect fields at optical frequencies. Uh, we detect the irradiance of the field, the magnitude squared of the maximal field, and then we have to use holography or phase retrieval to recover the, the wave field. And then once we know the wave field, we can propagate it and reconstruct three-dimensional objects. Another slide from episode 28 was this one where we looked at phased array radars, which at radar radio frequencies, uh, one can simply create a uh, radio receiver and scan the radio receiver electrically, and then from the received field, uh, reconstruct the image. Now, a big point of our, of you know, the last two chapters has been uh, that we don't have this uh, luxury at optical uh, frequencies, but we've seen uh, that, uh, first of all, the sophistication of optical field characterization has increased uh, dramatically over the last, uh, you know, 75 years that we've had the, the laser uh, going from uh, the origins of holography with uh, frequency domain multiplexing with uh, the Lethen and Eupachnix uh, method uh, through uh, more recent phase retrieval methods. And then in episode uh, 39, talking about uh, tychographic imaging. And of course, we also looked at uh, coded wavefronts of various forms to form methods for measuring the optical wavefront. All of this leads to the idea that maybe these two slides are, are wrong in so much as they disparage optical imaging. Maybe we can imagine uh, something like this here, an image, uh, a vision created by uh, Dolly, uh, showing the idea that we would have a, uh, a camera, that we would illuminate an object with a coherent wavefront, and we could capture uh, the coherent wavefront in a camera, and then uh, reconstruct uh, the three-dimensional form of the object uh, with, uh, without the need for a reference or without anything more than the illumination, the same as we do uh, with radar. Uh, we're a long way away from this vision, unfortunately, but there's nothing physically impossible about it. Uh, we need to understand how to deal with speckle. We need to understand uh, how to more efficiently estimate objects uh, from the wave field measurements, as we did uh, in this uh, in chapter five in dealing with the deep image prior, and understand uh, you know really how to well calibrate systems, build excellent forward models, and then build uh, large-scale inversion algorithms to estimate the object. But we're on the way, so let's imagine uh, how we would build such a camera in today's episode. Computational imaging. Episode 40, Wavefront Cameras. If you go out and Google Wavefront Cameras, the search doesn't come up empty. Uh, here's an example from Axiom Optics, where they were selling uh, Shaq Hartman sensors. Uh, which use uh, lensless arrays to measure uh, local variations in the wavefront. Another option comes from Phasix, which uses a quadrilateral shearing interferometer uh, to measure uh, uh, local shears in the wavefront and try to reconstruct uh, the wavefront. Both of these systems are effectively measuring uh, the derivative of the wavefront. And when you integrate the derivative, it turns out that uh, errors will propagate so that the, the global wavefront uh, will have some errors. As we saw uh, way back in uh, Episode 29, uh, we can uh, evaluate uh, the quality of wavefront reconstruction uh, by looking at the kramer al bounds on estimation of the wavefront. This was for a two-mode interferometer, and we saw uh, the accuracy with which we could estimate the amplitude of the mode and the relative phase between the modes. It's known that the uh, error, the, the, the quantum-limited error that you get in uh, multimodal signal estimation is equal to uh, one photon per mode. So if we used a, a phase quadrature holographic measurement, we saw in episode 28 uh, that we would have an error of one photon. And then as you increase the number of photons in the measurement, the signal to noise ratio will improve as the square root of the number of photons measured. Um, so this paper, uh, Photon Limited Bounds for Phase Retrieval, uh, looks at optimal uh, interconnections for reaching the, the photon limited bound in reference-free phase retrieval and shows that uh, as you have a certain number of elements and connect them in uh, very complex ways with some long-range connections, it is possible to build wavefront sensors at a large scale that will approach the quantum limit. 
The paper also considers uh, Fourier Tiger graphic wavefront estimation and uh, finds uh, that uh, Tiger graphic systems for random fields uh, get within 10% or so of the uh, quantum limited wavefront uh, fidelity. Now, as we saw in uh, episode 39, uh, there are uh, systematic errors in tychographic reconstruction, especially if we have sparse images where uh, points in the field are not interfering with each other, uh, that will lead to systematic errors. So the errors that we get in uh, tychographic reconstruction are, are not random, uh, but it's an interesting starting point for understanding wavefront uh, sensing. And we can imagine building more and more complicated and sophisticated wavefront cameras uh, that can combine uh, local connectivity as in tychographic system with defocus and with, with other forms. The key is to have a well-characterized system. So we need to imagine building a uh, optic uh, that takes the incident wavefront and encodes it in a way uh, that it will be well-structured for estimating the phase and amplitude of the field. A key point of that, is, as we've seen, is that we need to make more than one measurement a reconstructed uh, signal point. So we're going to measure the irradiance of the fields. We've already lost the phase, and we need to make you know between four and ten measurements per phase and amplitude uh, signal we want to reconstruct to robustly recover the signal. Although um, we should be able to apply compressive measurement and compressive inference strategies with known uh, structures and images to, be to do better than this. But if we want to work with random fields, we need to make uh, this kind of oversampling. Uh, we've looked at, uh, you know, one way to do this is to build a metastructure. You could even, of course, uh, use uh, random structures uh, to encode the wavefront. But there, um, first of all, you have a, a very large difficulty in calibrating uh, the wavefront encoding. And second of all, it may not be well structured for reconstruction. We've seen that tachyographic reconstruction with overlapping apertures works well. So uh, we could go out and build a, uh, a meta optic uh, consisting of an array of lenses uh, with overlapping apertures. Uh, we've built a preliminary version of that with uh, uh, Johannes uh, Froerich and Harka Mujumdar from the uh, University of Washington. This is a, a scan of the phase map and the uh, image uh, in place. Uh, and then uh, here you uh, eliminate an object. And in this case, it's a five by five uh, array of overlapping apertures. Uh, and then, uh, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of artifacts with this particular design. So the uh, image uh, is not quite as simple to reconstruct as what was suggested with tachyographic sampling in episode 39. But using a neural estimator, you can uh, learn the calibrated image and uh, reconstruct uh, the object uh, using, in this case, a deep image prior. So here's a simulated uh, version of doing that uh, through uh, uh, you know, 15,000 epics of a deep image prior. These are experimental results uh, showing this, 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 this kind of uh, reconstruction, comparing uh, the experimentally achieved system and then what happens after we do uh, neural estimation uh, on it. B is with a, a simple um, uh, iterative phase retrieval, and C is with the, the neural uh, reconstruction. Uh, this is a continuing process. That the, the struggle to make better and better wavefront cameras will continue as uh, we, we battle between uh, building high quality encoders, calibrating them, and understanding how to implement the inverse of the forward model. A simpler version, as opposed to using a, uh, a, a custom uh, meta optic, would be to use a, a diffraction grating. So here you can build a camera uh, where the input apertures of the camera array overlap because all of the input apertures of the system, or the, the entrance apertures of the camera, all come through this. Uh, diffraction grading, and you can uh, separate the orders of the diffraction grading and then control the relative shift of the apertures by shifting the, the uh, sensors laterally uh, within the diffracted uh, orders. Um, and the, this, uh, this is a relatively simple way to build a, a wavefront camera with overlapping apertures, which will be well structured for tachyographic signal reconstruction. So uh, here is the, the basic system. You have uh, systems kind of the grading. The uh, images come through this diffraction grading. The diffraction grading is two-dimensional to split into uh, an, a two-dimensional array of, of cameras. So it has cross gradings to do that kind of uh, encoding. Uh, we'll look in a second about how many cameras we should use or how many diffraction orders. But here it's shown with with uh, the DC order and a plus and minus one order. Uh, Here's a, a review paper, you know, looking at uh, how this uh, kind of wavefront camera could be built from tachyographic systems. 
and uh, uh, look at the uh, impulse responses of the nine cameras for various shifts. So as you uh, you know shift, uh, you get a phase modulation on the uh, uh, impulse response. Here we're looking at the imaginary component, which will emphasize the phase structure of, of the modulation as we shift. Uh, you can go in and model uh, how well you do in the reconstruction relative to the quantum limit. So again, here the quantum limit would be uh, one photon error per uh, reconstructed pixel. Uh, you see that the kind of minimum number of uh, apertures needed would be around nine, and as you go up to 81 or even 100 apertures, uh, you get a modest increase in the uh, uh, in, in the overall uh, system performance. Now, there's a trade-off here uh, between the, the image size that you get from the cameras uh, and the uh, and the number of apertures you use. As you use more apertures, uh, you're uh, demagnifying the image more and and uh, creating smaller sized images, which requires the coherence uh, of the source to be uh, improved. Uh, there's also You can also model how well the wavefront camera does as a function of the aperture overlapping uh, ratio. Uh, we find there's a, a minimum overlap of, of around uh, 3 eighths of the aperture size. And then if the, uh, um, if the apertures fully overlap, of course, there's no redundancy in the measurements and the error will again uh, go up. So you, you, want, you want to have somewhere like a 50% displacement. Uh, in the aperture positions to have optimal phase retrieval. Uh, here's simulated results. So uh, A is the uh, is is the object. Um, B is the is the A is the object uh, irradiance, and B is the is the phase map. C is is a look at the uh, positions of the apertures uh, in the system, and then uh, D is what the the measurements look like, and uh, E and F show uh, reconstructions of the amplitude and in phase. Uh, of the uh, of the object, and if you look in detail at the phase map, uh, you'll find even though it's quite random, uh, the uh, reconstruction fidelity is very good. Uh, here's what an experimental system for this uh, type of system uh, looks like. You have a uh, iris, which is this 2D grading, and it maps out onto a camera array. And here's a slide going back to slide. Uh, 37, uh, looking at what images look like. And here, as we saw in slide 37, when we have the relative shifts in the apertures, you see this phase modulation on the on the image. And then uh, the, the goal here is to build a, a reconstruction algorithm to calibrate this system in a way that allows us to uh, estimate uh, the amplitude and phase of the field. Now, once you have the, here, the goal is not necessarily to get synthetic aperture and super resolution, as we saw with Fourier tachographic Microscopy. The goal here is simply to build a camera that captures uh, the wavefront, the, the coherent wavefront of the field with quantum limited fidelity in a single snapshot. Once you have that kind of camera, of course, then you could uh, synthesize aperture because you know the field on that aperture. So if you move around and capture the field at multiple apertures, uh, you can uh, try to phase them up and, and re-synthesize aperture to get higher resolution. Uh, the GitHub site for this uh, uh, sequence of, of lectures uh, has uh, the uh, simulation for this wavefront camera. It's the same uh, simulation site. They're the same notebook that we used in episode 39 to talk about tychography. It has a section about wavefront cameras. Uh, you can look at various aperture distributions and, and shifts between the, the, between the uh, cameras and what the PSF looks like for these shifts. Here the shifts are relatively small. So, and this is the, the magnitude of the PSF rather than the imaginary part. So you can see the kind of modulation. And then the, the, for random fields, uh, the reconstruction is um, very, very good. Here, the, the, the reconstruction is a fully uh, developed uh, random field um, with uh, you know diffraction limited modulation on the, on the phase uh, and uh, and random amplitude. And you see that you get very good reconstructions. As we talked about in episode 39, however, there are systematic errors in uh, typographic phase retrieval. And if you go in and play with this code, uh, you'll find that for various kinds of smooth image, the code may not work as well. And you may want to augment the code with with neural methods and other things beyond simple gersberg saxton iterative phase retrieval. But we are on the way to building this kind of camera, cameras that uh, you, know, you can just illuminate with a laser beam and they'll capture the wavefront just like a phased array and do that reconstruction. And hopefully uh, getting into this theory and playing with this code will help you make a step in that direction. So that's the end of our section of this course on uh, wave imaging. Uh, the next um, 
uh, five chapters of the course deal primarily with uh, natural wave fields uh, from uh, incoherent or partially coherent sources. Uh, next time, we're going to then introduce our third model for the wave for, for optical fields. We've been through in chapter four discussion of geometric wave fields, uh, we've, or ge geometric fields without waves. And then the last two chapters, we've talked about uh, coherent wave fields. Next time, we're going to talk about models of coherence. This is another picture from, from Dolly showing a uh, array of, uh, of telescopes. And uh, the, the telescopes are laid out in this V because we're going to use um, uh, you know, correlation between the telescopes to reconstruct images uh, using the Van Sitter-Zernicki theorem, which is introduced in Chapter 7 of Computational Optical Imaging. This allows us to do synthetic aperture imaging with incoherent fields. And the same exact kind of strategies is behind images like this one. The first image of a black hole was created using interferometric imaging on the uh, using the Van Sitter Zinnike theorem. In this case, an image of the black hole at the center of galaxy M87. So with the episode 41, let's start to talk about how this works.